So let's talk about morale, leadership and one of the main issues that the mechanic has in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about leadership in Warhammer 40k and perhaps what is the right way for it to be represented. I feel like it's always been one of those mechanics that Games Workshop have kind of struggled to get right. So in this video I thought we'd talk about some of the main conflicts of designing a good morale system that people like, how they seem to be changing the morale mechanics throughout 9th edition, and the pros and cons of what I think they're doing. Obviously a fair amount of personal opinion today. If you disagree with anything, don't at all hold back from letting me know what you think down in the comments. So anyway, I think one of the main issues with morale in Warhammer 40k is that people want meaningful morale mechanics, and yet a lot of the time most of the factions in Warhammer 40k really aren't ones that you would expect to flee all that much in the lore, and it can also be really quite unsatisfying when your models just leg it off the battlefield instead of doing what they're supposed to. I think in general if we ask most players, then having a well-realised system for morale is something that we do want in the game. It makes it feel a bit more like a war game rather than a game like chess. If you have undisciplined fighters within your army, they might well break and run at taking heavy combat attrition casualties, and it's interesting to take that account on how far you can push your troops when you're making decisions. It also maybe gives an advantage for more highly disciplined troops to shine through, and also represents some of the various most terrifying threats in 40k, things that are known for driving foes before them and making them run for the hills, maybe Night Lords, Boss Snickrot from the Orcs, the Drakari, or maybe the Primaris Reavers with their spooky skull masks. I think to represent these sort of things, you do want a leadership mechanic in the game, and you want it to be at least some way meaningful, so the abilities of these guys don't just get ignored. However, what makes things a little bit tricky is that you can argue that the vast majority of factions in Warhammer 40k are either completely fearless, famed for being ridiculously well disciplined and will never run in battle, or just known not to care about their own lives to any great extent. You don't normally see enormous mobs of orcs running away, They'll tend to hurl themselves screaming at the enemy without regard for their lives, provided there's enough of the lads surging forward with them. Space Marines famously know no fear. Necrons and Thousand Suns are kind of soulless automata that you wouldn't expect to flee. Skitari are kind of pre-programmed clockwork soldiers. Demons are deathless beings from another dimension. Usually the worst that can happen is them being banished back into the warp, though I guess they do have their demonic instability. Tyranids devolve into mindless swarms when they're under the command of Synapse. And knights and vehicles are kind of hard to represent with morale, as any single model unit doesn't really take casualties, it's either just alive or it's destroyed. Finally, a few of the other more normal factions are well known for their impressive resolve or incredible proficiency of training. The Adeptus Auroritas are all about their utmost faith in the Emperor, and the various flavours of Eldar usually tend to have honed themselves into forms of martial perfection that should be well inured to the maelstrom of battle. For armies that are really expected to be affected by leadership quite a bit, maybe Imperial Guard and Tau, are arguably two of the more normal fighting forces, and maybe some less disciplined forces like Chaos Cultists or Gene Stealer Cult, or Orcs when they're in small numbers, not big howling mobs. I do know that you can look at morale and combat attrition as other factors aside from just fleeing, they could be covering the retreat of injured comrades, or have their programming disrupted by the loss of other networked entities, but I must admit it still does feel a bit on the weird side when you might see a whole bunch of Necron Warriors or Space Marines disappear in the morale phase. I think the fact that so many factions are fearless, or almost so, really is a big incentive to make morale weaker as a mechanic, but also there's a little bit of pressure for in-game mechanics as well, as just from a player in command of an army, it has the potential to be really really unsatisfying if your super elite unit fails a morale test, and that either utterly ruins the squad, or even destroys the squad completely, as they suddenly decide to head for the hills. In previous editions you could have some slightly silly looking scenarios occurring, say if you had a huge squad of Chaos Terminators near the edge of a board, you could potentially take 25% casualties, fail a slightly unlikely morale test, and then literally lose the entire unit if they fell back far enough for one model to hit the edge. A huge loss like that really isn't all that much fun. Maybe in a similar sort of way that you might lose a unit on a deep strike mishap, and never even get to set up your fancy unit to play with in the first place, they could just stay in the box. I'm not saying that some high stakes gambles can't be interesting, but in general it just feels a little bit arbitrary to me. To have a small but painful chance of a squad just disappearing at a moment's notice, and I can see why Games Workshop didn't go down this route for later versions of morale. I think both this and the in-game lore both drive people towards not wanting morale to be that big of a factor for a lot of the biggest and most exciting units in 40k. I feel like morale is one of those mechanics that Games Workshop have been messing around with for quite a while now, making a bunch of small changes to both keep it meaningful and fit it within people's expectations on the table. 
Prior to 8th edition, you'd generally be testing 2d6 against your leadership characteristic if you lost a combat or happened to take 25% casualties or more. If you failed the test, then models would physically move towards the opposing player's board edge, usually 2d6 inches per turn. They'd only be able to do some basic actions like fire snapshots at the enemy while they retreated. They could try and regroup each turn, but if they reached the board edge, then they would wind up just running away. If you failed a morale test in melee as well, you had the potential to be cut down in a sweeping advance. Sometimes that was meaningful, but again because it was quite so devastating, meant that almost every unit that really mattered was generally protected by either and they shall know no fear or the fearless rule, both of which basically negated that altogether. Overall, I think perhaps the most interesting thing was the way that your squad physically moved away from the enemy. It really felt quite cinematic, though I think to be honest it was a little bit clunky and fairly all or nothing as to whether or not your squad broke or didn't. It could certainly be a bit fiddly if the squad's route to the edge of the board wasn't exactly clear. And I can see why it was perhaps one of the mechanics that they decided to drop, along with blast templates and scatter dice, just as the movement and things could be a bit subjective. In 8th edition, morale was really quite heavily simplified. Total up the casualties you've taken, add 1d6 to it, and for every point above the model's leadership characteristic, you take one further morale casualty. I personally felt that simplifying the phase down a bit was probably for the best, at least now it's relatively quick to resolve, but I feel like it still wasn't exactly the perfect system. Usually it became very predictable as to whether or not you'd actually deal morale damage, and it usually led to the situation where you could either be absolutely confident that you wiped the entire rest of the squad from morale, or in all likelihood you weren't going to inflict any casualties. It leads to the situation where everyone tries to take multiple small units, and people could say quite confidently kill say 7 men out of an Imperial Guard squad, do that for multiple different units, and guarantee a whole bunch of morale casualties after that. Again, with it being really all or nothing, either losing whole units or losing nothing, it meant that the factions that needed them often needed ignores morale mechanics, and basically any factor that needed it could get decent morale protection. The very, very worst that could happen would be that you'd have to fall back on the two command point auto pass and budget a few command points for that for a key unit. You could use it multiple times per game, and that helps keep morale to being almost completely useless as a reliable way to achieve anything. In 9th edition though, I must admit I do quite like the way that they're going with morale. I was perhaps a little bit dismissive of the mechanic when we first saw the rules in the core rulebook, as it did appear that compared with 8th edition, morale was far less devastating. Now if you failed a test, you'd only lose one casualty, and then only a third or sixth of any of the rest through combat attrition, rather than potentially having the entire rest of the squad auto-wiped. When it was just the 9th edition core rules and the 8th edition codexes, morale becomes super redundant, and it was actually even better for certain big horde units, things like guard conscripts, who a lot of the time don't have a fearless mechanic. However, while doing that, when the 9th edition codexes have come out, the general trend has been to either remove or weaken easy access to fearless or other ways to cheat or get around morale tests. Perhaps the single biggest change would be the change to and they shall know no fear. Now instead of getting to re-roll the morale test, which meant that for multiple small units you almost never needed to care about morale, now it means that marines just don't suffer modifiers to combat attrition, and it means that pricey space marines at least have a fair likelihood of suffering at least one morale casualty when they take a few hits in their squad which is pretty hard-hitting when you are losing a multi-wound and quite points-intensive model. You're never really likely to lose much more than that, due to only suffering combat attrition on once, but I think having morale at least apply to marines in some way is kind of necessary for the mechanic to function at all, just because marines tend to make up so much of a part of the field. Other things that have been toned down are the power from pain morale mechanic for Drakari, the ignores leadership buff it comes a bit too late to be all that relevant in Battle Round 5. I think they realised that they slipped up with Ab makes morale, giving them an auto-pass stratagem when they're near objectives, and they nerfed that heavily in the rebalancing FAQ, so Abmech do fear morale quite a bit now. And perhaps the single most devastating change was to Orcs, who could basically treat morale as not being a thing provided they had a 30-strong boys mob, where now it's very much the opposite of that, again they'll only ignore combat attrition like the Space Marines. Morale can be pretty painful for Orcs now, particularly as they're leadership 7, and the war boss no longer gives them another easy way to ignore it, as his keeping order stratagem was changed to be 2 CP. As well as that, in general debuffs tend to be getting a little bit more common or a bit more vicious when they're present. You only need one squad of Reavers to hand out minus two leadership now. Death Guard Terminators can cause minus four leadership for a CP. And Drakari can really go down the spooky scary army quite well now, both combining fairly powerful leadership debuffs with also ways to convert low leadership to direct damage with things like Phantasm Grenade Launchers. Overall at the moment, I must admit I do quite like the way that morale and leadership are going. I feel like it's perhaps at the right sort of level, meaningful in the way that it will often cause more casualties if you do take heavy losses on a squad, and more so if they happen to be low leadership, 
there usually it's not going to be guaranteeing the wipes of units, and it still is really quite random if you might lose a whole bunch of models, or just the one. I think perhaps the most interesting part where the new morale mechanics shine is when you sometimes have the scenario whether or not one single model might run or stay on an objective, where if you do fail a surprising leadership test, then you're going to be testing for combat attrition on the last guy, and whether that chap chooses to stay or run could be the difference between a win or a loss. With a different law for each faction though, I do feel that morale is always going to need bespoke solutions for each army, and there's not really a good one-size-fits-all equation. As I said, it does feel a bit weird to have space marines lost to morale, necrons fleeing, and particularly I feel like the orcs in big mobs of 30 running away does feel just a bit off to me. Maybe it would have been nice if the big mobs of boys had had a little bit more morale defence, as it does feel like it would push me quite a lot towards using smaller units of orcs rather than big mobs of 30 these days. Still though, as I said previously, you could certainly represent it just in your mind by combat attrition as opposed to outright fleeing, being cut off from supplies, retreating with injured squad mates, failure of pre-programmed instructions, and all sorts of other combat chaos. I certainly hope that those space marines are tactically retreating, and not dishonouring the Emperor's name by just making a run for it. So let me know what you think about morale in 9th edition as it stands, are you a fan of the mechanic, does it need to be tweaked, and is there anything that you'd change for your army individually? Let me know your thoughts as always, down in the comments below. If you have been enjoying the videos, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll keep more 40k stuff coming pretty much every day. Finally, if you are enjoying videos on the channel quite a bit, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Channel patrons do gain access to a few rewards, such as seeing certain new videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.